All right. Welcome back. Now, today, we'll be going through the remaining part of these fractions and decimals, and which is decimals. We already went through fractions in our last class, right? So if you missed that, you can try to go through. Okay, so we are talking about decimals. We'll be looking at facts about decimals. We'll be talking about types of decimals and how we round off decimals. All right, so that's what we'll be looking at in today's class. All right, so without wasting time, let's get into business. So, what are decimals? Now, the decimal number system is a system of representing numbers using power of 10. Okay, so if you can write a number as times 10 raised to power something, then we have what we call a decimal. A decimal. So, an example of a decimal is this number here, 4352.81697. All right, as you know, most decimal numbers will contain a decimal point. Now, it doesn't mean that if you don't see a decimal point, you don't have a decimal number. Of course, you can still have a decimal number. Any number that can be written as something times 10 raised to power something is a decimal number. Okay, so now the place value of each digit corresponds to a power of 10 corresponds to a power of 10. So therefore, each digit here has a name according to the position of that digit. Okay, so now, these are the names of the digits according to their positions in that decimal system. Okay, so this first number here is called the unit digit or ones digit. Alright, unit or ones digit. Take note of that. So if they don't want to use the word unit, they can say ones digit. That's this first number. And after that, you have the tens digit. That's the five, the tens digit. And after that, you have the hundreds digit, which is this. And after that, you have the thousands digit, which is this four. Okay. So the first is unit followed by tens, followed by a hundred, followed by a thousand. If you have more, you have ten thousand, hundred thousand, million and so on like that so that's those are the names of the digits according to their positions then after the decimal point okay after the decimal point the first digit is called the tenths the tenth digit all right so there's no unit after decimal point the first digit is tenths tenths digits then after that we have the hundredth digits okay after that we have the thousandth digits which is this six thousand digits after that, we have 9 as 10,000th digit. And after that, we have 7 as a 100,000th digit. Okay, so you should be able to know or say the, the, the name of the digit according to its position. Is it the unit? Is it the tens? Is it the 100,000? Or is it tens, hundreds, thousands, and so on and so forth? Okay, so the place value of each digit corresponds to a power of 10. So now this decimal number can be expanded like this as you can see. So because it is 4352.81697. So this 4 is 4000. All right, that's why right. the, the place value is 1000. It's 1000. Then this is 300 352. So 3 is 300. So that is why the place value is 100. Like I said, we have units, tens, 100,000. Then this is tens. So it is 5 times 10, which is 50. And then unit, unit means 1. Or like we said, 1's unit, uh, digit. So this is 2 times 1, which is 2. So we have 4,000 plus 300 plus 50 plus 2. Then plus, now here we have 0 0.8. This is what we have here. Then we have 0 0.01, which is what we have here. Then we have 0 0.006. Then we have 0 0.0009. Then we have 0 0.00007. Okay, so we have simply expanded these numbers here. 
we've expanded these numbers okay so as it is here if you check what i have here if i add all this together i am going to get this decimal number back all right if i add all these things here i will get the decimal number back okay so now my four thousand can be written as four times one thousand that's why it is the thousand digits my 300 can be written as three times 100 that is what is the 100 digits all right my 50 can be written as 5 times 10 that is why it is the tens digit and my 2 can be written as 2 times 1 that is why it is called the ones digit or unit then 0 0.8 can be written as 8 over 10 and that's what I mean by tenths tenths 8 tenths okay so that's what it's called the tenth digit 0 0.01 is 1 over 100 that's what is called the hundredth digit. That's hundredth. So when you have it as a fraction like this, you have it as hundredth. This is six thousand. Zero point zero zero six. Six thousand. This is nine ten thousand. All right, nine ten thousand. So this is seven hundred thousand. Seven hundred thousand. Okay. So now I can write on these numbers as power of ten. So one thousand is ten to the power three, as you can see. 100 is 10 to the power 2, 10 is 10 to the power 1, 1 is 10 to the power 0, over 10, that's 10 to the power minus 1. So this is 8, bracket 10 to the power 1, minus 1, that is 1 over 10. This is 1, bracket 10 to the power minus 2, that is our 1 over 100, okay. Then 10 to the power minus 3, that's our 1000, 10 to the power minus 4, that's our 10,000. And then 3 to the power minus 5, which is our 100,000. Therefore, this simply means we can easily write these kind of numbers in something like 10 to the power something. Okay, so that is the idea here. That's what we are trying to learn here. How we can simply write a number like this as times 10 to the power something. So when we have 5.398, for instance, 5.398, it is simply the same as 5398 all over 1,000 over 1000 that is what this simply means and we simply think you, simple thing you just need to do is remove the point so you have 5398 that's your numerator then how many digits do you have after the point we have three digits so that means you have over one with three zeros with three zeros and therefore you can write as 5398 times over 1000 means 1000 that is 10 raised to the power minus 3 10 to the power minus 3. So this number is written as 5398 times 10 to the power minus 3. Okay, so it also shows to me that if I see a number like this, I should be able to write my answer straight away without bothering myself with multiplication. Or when I see something like this and I want to divide the number like this, I should be able to write my answer straight away without pressing calculator. Okay, so another way you see it is you divide this number by 1000 to get 5.398. Okay, so another example is 0 0.00769. So here I have 769 as my numerator. Okay, then after point, how many zeros? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that means over 1 with 5 zeros. And that's something as 769 times 10 to the power minus 5 because I have 5 zeros. So minus 5. So this I've written it in power of 10. 414.25. 414.25 and what do I have? I remove the points. I have 414.25 divided by 1 with how many zeros? Two zeros because I have two numbers after point. Okay, so which now gives me 414.25 times 10 to the power minus 2. So we have simply written these decimal numbers in what we call standard form. In standard form all right so if you see like this show to write this way if you see your fraction like this show to write decimal in decimal form without wasting your time okay now we have facts about decimals now if the decimal point of a decimal number is moved n places from left to right then the decimal number has been multiplied by 10 to the power n all right so when you move the point a particular number of times from left to right then you have multiplied that number by 10 to the power the number of times you moved. Okay, so for example here, I have 0 0.76837 times 100. 
All right. So now here, this is something as 0.76 h 37 times 10 to the power 2. And what does this mean? It means that if I see times 10 to the power 2, power 2, it means I'll move my point from left to right two times. So I have 1, then 2. So my point comes here. And therefore, my financial will be 76.837. So it means if I see something like this and I want to multiply, I shouldn't press my calculator. I'll just check how many zeros do I have here. So I move my point to the right one, two, two times. And that gives me this. An example 72.78 times 10,000. 72.78 times 10,000. So what is the answer? So I don't need my calculator at all. All I need to do is how many zeros do I have? One, two, three, four, four zeros. So that means I'll move my point four times to the right. So if I, if I move my point four times to the right, I have one, two, all right, then I will have three, four. So you can see that I have two spaces after the eight. So I'll fill those spaces with zeros. And that gives me 727800. All right, so that is the result of this multiplication so that's all we are talking about there so moving a point from left to right simply means you are multiplying the number by 10 raised to power the number of times you move okay second one says if the decimal point in the decimal number is moved n places from right to left from right to left then the decimal number has been divided by 10 raised to the power n or multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus n okay so here if you move from right to left you move from right to left just move to the back it means you are dividing by 10 raised to power the number of times you have moved or you are multiplying by 10 raised to power minus the number of times you have moved so for instance now if i have 58796 divided by 1000 what this is telling me is that i should take my decimal point to the left three times because i have three zeros now you may be asking where's the decimal point yeah when you have a whole number like this your decimal point is actually actually at outside here so you can simply see this thing this thing here is point zero so your point is outside but because you're having zero zero after the point you can easily remove the point okay but now it is very obvious i have a decimal point so if i divide dividing by 1000 it means i am moving my point from right to left three times because i have three zeros so or because i have minus three as my power so i'm the point now i have one two three so that's what my point will be here and i'm going to have five eight point seven nine six so i've simply divided this number by one thousand all right so all this kind of division and multiplication when you're multiplying or dividing by one zero one zero one zero zero one zero 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 one zero 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 so you shouldn't require a calculator at all just to save your time in the exam you should be able to write the answer straight up without wasting your time 31.0067 divided by 10,000 31.0067 divided by 10,000 so here my decimal point is here it's same thing as 31.0067 times this power minus four because i have four zeros and i'm dividing so that be minus four now that means i should move my point to the left four times to the left four times so if i do that i have one then two then three and four so i have two spaces at the front of three that will fill with zeros okay then i will have point zero so that means answer will be zero point zero zero three one zero zero six seven so that's when you divide this number by ten thousand so that is what it means when you say you move a point from left to right or right to left so you are moving from left to right then you are multiplying by 10 raised to the power the number of times you move all right so that is how we uh, can simplify this kind of multiplication and then division okay now we have types of decimals types of decimals now the first is terminating decimals terminating decimals now these are decimals that terminate okay when you say terminate that means when you express the fraction in decimal the decimal does not continue for instance 1 over 4 1 over 4 is 0 0.25 you can press a calculator you will see that it gives you 0 0.25 and it stops there it doesn't continue okay 2 over 5 is 0 0.4 that is another terminating decimal 52 over 25 is 
that is where it will stop it won't continue so these kind of decimals are called terminating decimals now how do you know if a fraction will give you a terminating decimal now this this here note for a decimal to terminate the prime factors of the denominator of the equivalent fraction of the decimal must be only two five or two and five after simplifying again let me read for a decimal to terminate the prime factors of the denominator of the equivalent fraction of the decimal must be only two five or two and five after simplifying okay so what are, what are we talking about here we are saying that for a fraction to result in a decimal that will terminate it means that all the prime factors of the denominator of that fraction must be either only two or only five or just two and five so there should not be any other prime number as the prime factor of the denominator of that fraction once you have another prime number apart from two and five that fraction will not terminate except if that prime number can see the same kind of prime number to eliminate in the numerator let's look at some examples so that you can understand what we are talking about here let's say we have 17 over 32 all right now for me to know if this fraction will produce a terminating decimal or not all i need to do to do is to take the denominator and express it in prime factorization and if you remember how we do that 32 is simply 8 times 4 and that is 2 raised to the power 3 times 2 raised to the power 2 or simply 2 raised to the power 5 so the prime factor is only 2 so it means this fraction will terminate definitely it will terminate you can press the calculator to check okay so if i have let's say uh uh 143 divided by 125 okay all i need to do is to check the denominator and uh, from the denominator here 125 is 25 times 5 and that is 5 raised to the power 2 times 5 to the power 1 i like this 5 to the power 3 so since the prime factor is only 5 then this will terminate to terminate now I could have something like maybe 47 uh, divided by say 75 okay now if you look at this will this terminate let's check 75 is 25 times 3 now because I can see 3 here already I don't need to bother myself this fraction will not terminate because the prime factor of the denominator contains three you don't contain three as prime factor so it will not terminate all right now let's say i have 27 all over 75 okay will this terminate or not let's check checking the denominator again of course as you know from this one it is 25 is 5 to the power 2 times 3 now we may say that the denominator contains three it will not terminate but no it will terminate and why it terminates is because this three here can cancel out three from 27 to give us nine so in a way to be clear enough we may try to simplify the fraction first so if i see something like this what i will do first is now i can see 27 over 75 then i will first say okay since i know three can go here three in 27 i have nine 3 and 75, I have 25. Okay, now, so as you can see, and I have only 5 to the power 2 in my denominator, meaning that I have only 5 as a prime factor. So then that means it will terminate. So it is good if you can try to simplify the fraction first before you now decide to say it will terminate or not after checking your denominator. After checking your denominator. So the simple idea here is. And if once the denominator has prime factors that are 
just only probably only two or only five or two and five that this that fraction will produce a terminating decimal okay so we can say for instance any other number like maybe whatever 418 divided by uh 1000 okay it is clear 1000 uh 1000 is 100 times 10 which i can add as 10 times 10 times 10 which i can add as 2 times 5 times 2 times 5 times 2 times so it's very clear that all the prime factors are 2 and 5 so this will terminate and of course from what we have been doing that means move your point to the back 1 2 3 three times so giving you 0 0.418 as the result so it will terminate so once the denominator can produce only two or only five or just two and five as the prime factors it will that's after simplifying then it will terminate all right so that's how you know a fraction that will result in a terminating decimal okay so let's move on now two repeating decimals these are decimals in which a digit or group of digits repeats indefinitely all right you just have a digit or a group of digits repeating indefinitely without stopping these are called repeating decimals i will call them recurring decimals okay so for example one over nine and one over nine is zero point one 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 and it won't stop okay so one over twenty two that will be zero point zero four five 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 and so on okay so this kind of decimals in order to stop writing them the way they as they may with their long length then we use this bar to indicate that this one repeats without end all right so here as well we have 0 0.04545445 so we put the bar on the 45 so this bar simply indicates the digits that repeat indefinitely so when you see the, a bar on a number like this after a decimal point that means that that digit or the number repeats indefinitely so it could be one number it could be two numbers it could be three numbers it could be four it could be five it could be no matter the number of, of digits you have so it means they repeat indefinitely so these are called repeating decimals repeating decimals now note all repeating decimals can be written as fractions with only digits 9 or 9 and 0 in their denominators and the number of the digits 9 must be equal to the number of the repeating digits in the decimal do you get that all repeating decimals can be written as fractions with only digits 9 or 9 and 0 in their denominators and the number of the digits 9 must be equal to the number of the repeating digits in the decimal. What I'm saying here, now if you check this, this is 0 0.1111111111 and so on. So we can write this as 1 over 9. Yes, that is just repeating that one, just that will be your numerator, divided by 9 because we have only one number repeating. Press the calculator and, uh, calculator and check to confirm it. 0 0.222222 is something as 2 over 9. Alright? Something as 2 over 9. Now, 0 0.565656565656 is something as 56 over 99. So we have two nines because you're having two numbers repeating. Can I press the calculator to check? Okay? 0 0.437, 437, 437, 437, and so on. Will be 437 over 999. Because we have three digits repeating. So that will be three nines. Three nines. Alright. So that is how we can easily express our repeating decimals in fractions. So you can then probably break the fraction down into simple, uh, the simpler one. Uh, and then see what it looks like. Okay. Another example here is 0 0.05. 0 0.05. 0 0.05. 0 0.05. 0 0.05. 0 0.05, 0 0.05. That will simply be 0, 05 over 99. Nine. Don't be deceived. We have two digits repeating 0 and 5. So we just can, we can simply write as 5 over 99. Now you can see here 0 0.055555555. That's what we have here. So only 5 is repeating here. Now when we have this, 
when you have a zero before you're repeating numbers and the zeros or the zero is not repeating then you're repeating your fraction will be five over nine we have only one nine because we have only one number repeating then the zero you have here you transfer it here at the back of the number so that's why you can have nine and zero as your digit as your as the digit of the denominator okay so the five that is repeating then over nine because you have only one number repeating then the zero before the decimal point transfer it here if you look at this we have zero point zero zero seven nine zero zero seven nine zero zero seven nine zero zero seven nine so we have four numbers repeating actually but we have only seven and nine as the non-zero there so we have seven over seven i mean seventy nine over now nine four times because we have four zeros repeating but when you look at this we have zero point zero zero seven nine seven nine seven nine seven nine seven nine seven nine and so on so we have only seven and nine repeating which is seventy nine all over now we have nine nine because we have only two numbers repeating whereas so we have two zeros here that are not repeating so we transfer them here so we have 79 over 9900 so if you press calculator this is what it gives you if you press this so you can see that there's a difference between 0 0.0079 with a bar on the four numbers and 0 0.0079 with a bar on the seven and nine alone so they are not the same and you have to know which one is bigger between the two if i may ask you which one is bigger between this and this okay and if you check well if you can't really say from the decimal part you can say from the day from the fraction and as you know they have the same numerator 79 79 so from our last class on that fraction what do you do you compare the denominators the one with the bigger denominator will be the smaller one and as here we have 9999 9900 so meaning this this has a bigger denominator therefore this one will be smaller all right so it means 0 0.00790079009 is smaller than 0.00797979979 so because you can come across something like that in in, in gre and they will ask you to compare uh something like that so you should be able to do that without stress okay so now let's look at some other examples on how we can convert our repeating decimals to fractions to fractions now for instance let's say we want to express uh maybe we have 1.0 five in fraction that's 1.0505050505 now when we have something like this there is something you have to note here here we don't have zero point in this place we don't have zero point we have one point one point so now first thing you need to do is to separate the repeating part from the non-repeating part and what do i mean by that this 1.05 here can be written as 1 plus 0.05 okay 1 plus 0.05 so my 05 is repeating yes so when you add this you get this you get add this side you get this side okay so now to do this i will now have 1 plus so to write this one in fraction now you know how to write it that will be what we have five because we have only five as the non-zero digits over nine okay but how many numbers are repeating zero and five so two numbers repeating that will be nine nine all right nine nine now there is no zero before the after the point that is not repeating so you can't transfer any zero here don't forget so this one is this zero is also repeating just have two nines so this means you're going to have our uh, sm will be nine nine that's 99 so one in 99 will give us 90 so 99 times one will give us 99 plus 99 in 99 we have one so one times five we have five and this gives us one other than four over 99 so if you press the calculator this fraction gives you this decimal yes so that is how we can easily convert our are repeating or recording decimals to fractions okay 
let's say we have another example maybe we want to see uh 2.0045 uh, let's say we have our our bar on these three numbers 045 repeating 045 repeating so this infraction how do we write it cool like i said separate the repeating part from the non repeating part so this i have 2.0 non repeating so i can just write as 2.0 or 2 plus now i'm going to have 0 0.0 zero four five like this okay so all you just all you're just doing is you're, you're taking the two away from here so when you take the two away it remains zero there so zero point zero zero four five but zero four five repeating so now we have two plus so in this case now we have zero four five repeating so three numbers are repeating so that will be forty five over how many nines three nines because three numbers are repeating. But there is a zero here after the point that is not repeating. So we transfer it here. Okay, so that gives us two plus 45 over 9990. Nine, nine, so we do over one. I will take LCM, which is 9990. Nine, nine, so one in 9990. Nine, nine, times 2 okay so if you multiply that you see you have 19,980 okay let me give you a trick here or now you can do something like this in a faster way so since you have 9990 you want to apply by 2 all right so if you don't want to press your calculator this is very close to 10,000 as you can see just remaining 10 to make 10,000. So just take 10,000 times 2, that gives you 20,000. Then this remaining 10 times 2 will give you 20. So subtract so the 20 from 20,000. Alright, so minus 20. That will give you 19,980. So you can do that just to get your work faster. So plus this in this will give us 1. So 1 times 2 will give us 45. So at the end, when we add this 19,980 plus 45, that will give us 20,000, as you can see, and 25, divided by 9990. Okay, so 20,025 divided by 9990. So if you divide this, automatically it's going to give us this decimal that we have here. Or if you can still simplify it, break it down, you can see that these two numbers, five can go in them, in the numerator and in the denominator. So maybe you may have to. But just for you to know how you can convert all these numbers or all these decimals to fractions. Okay. Now we have irrational numbers. Now these are decimals that neither terminate nor repeat. So we have some decimals that will not terminate and neither will they repeat. So when you divide them, you just see several numbers after the point. They will not repeat. They will not terminate. You just keep writing several numbers. So these are called rational numbers. So examples are square root of 2. We have 1.4142135623373 and so on like that. Root 3, we have 1.73205 and so on. Pi, for example, the real value of pi, not the approximated one, 3.141596. So these are examples of what we call irrational numbers they don't terminate they don't repeat so they are numbers you cannot really express as fractions you cannot really ex correctly express as fractions so they are called irrational numbers all right so now we have rounding up decimals now when we're rounding up decimals, what i'm talking about this simply means reducing the digit of a decimal number to a particular place value so when we're trying to reduce our decimal number okay we want to reduce the number of digits after the decimal point that's when we are rounding off now what do we do here if the digit to be rounded off is greater than four it is rounded to one and added to the preceding digit okay that's if you want to round off a number if the digit is from five and above you simply turn into one and you add to the preceding digit now if the digit to be rounded off is less than five it is turned to zero and could be removed if it is after the decimal point 
but must be written if it is a number before the decimal point. So now, for example, we have 2456.53846. Okay, so let's assume we want to round off to the nearest 10,000. To the nearest 10,000. And where's our 10,000? Don't forget, this is tens, this is hundreds, this is thousands, this is 10,000, this is 100,000. So we're running off to 10,000. That means we are running off to this point, this digit. Which means we have this digit 6 to round off. We have this digit 6 to round off. So now, this is 6. So it is more than 4. That means we turn it to 1 and we add it to the immediate number before it. So if we turn this to 1 and we add to this 4, then it gives us 5. So it gives us 2456.5385 to the nearest 10,000. Okay, if you want to run off to the nearest, nearest 1,000, nearest 1,000, so we have our 10th, 100,000, so we are coming to this point here, so which means we need to round off this immediate number, forget about this one, just the next number to where you are going, is what you round off, so we have 4, since it is not up to 5, what does that mean, we turn it to 0, and we eliminate it, yes, turn it to 0 and eliminate and once done the zero and eliminate every other number after it eliminated automatically. So that gives us 2456.538 as to the nearest 1000. Now to the nearest tenth. Nearest tenth. Now our tenth is this. And that means we need to round off what? Round off three. Forget about the rest. Round off three. And since this three is not up to five, we turn it to zero and eliminate. So we eliminate it, every other number eliminated. So it becomes 2456.5.5. Now, to the nearest 10, not 10 now, 10. And where's our 10? Well, don't forget this is unit, this is 10. So we want to round off to this point here. So we're rounding off the next digit. Next digit, which is the 6. And since it is more than 4, then we turn it to 1 and add to this. So when we turn it to 1 and add to this, we have 246. Now we replace this with 0 because it is before the point. If it's after the point, you can throw the, throw, throw the 0 away. But since it's before the point, you must keep the 0. So it becomes 2460 to the nearest 10. Now, we have to the nearest 100, to the nearest 100. So here, 100, that's unit, 10s, 100. So you are coming here. So that means we're rounding up this 5. Alright, like I said, the immediate number. You round it up. So this 5. Now, since we have 5 there, so it is more than 4, that means you turn it to 1 and add to the 4 behind it, the preceding number. So if you turn this to 1 and we add to this 4, then we have 2, 5. Then we replace these two digits before the points, we replace them with zeros. So giving us 2,500. So that is to the nearest 100. So you can see that you have two zeros. To the nearest ten, you have zero. To the nearest tenth, you have only one number, tenth. To the nearest one thousand, you have three numbers. That's tenth, hundred, thousand. To the nearest ten thousand, you have four numbers. Tenth, hundred, thousand, one thousand. Ten thousand, I mean. Okay, so that's how we round off our decimal numbers. That's how we round off our decimal numbers. Okay. So now, let's look at some examples on these decimals to wrap up the class. Okay, now, example one here. Example one says, in a decimal number, a bar over one or more consecutive digits means that the, that the pattern of digits under the bar repeats without end. For example, 0 0.387, the bar is 0 0.387, 3, uh, 387, 387. So, well, they're just explaining to you the meaning of the bar in this place. So, there's no, there's nothing special about that statement. Just explain to you the meaning of the bar. So, here now, quantity A says 0.717, 717, 717, 717. And this one says 0.71, 71, 71, 71. So, how do we compare these two quantities here? 0 0.717, 717, 717, 717, and so on. Then 0.717171717171 Which one is bigger? You see, because this has three digits, and this one has two, 
Then you can see this one is bigger than this. Well, we cannot just use that to conclude. Or can we convert to this to fractions and we'll be able to check their denominators? Well, when we convert to fractions, remember this will be 717 over 999. This will be 71 over 99. So they are not having the same numerator. So this is 717. This one is 71. So they are not having the same numerator. So therefore, we cannot compare the denominators. Unlike the other one we did. Then, if you can't do that, how then do we solve this? Now, let's look at what we can do to answer this kind of question. This is what we simply need to do. Now, here, what can we do here? The only way out now is to write these two decimals such a way that they will have the same decimal places. And when you say decimal places, we're talking about the same number of digits after decimal point. Make sure you, re you repeat the repeating part until you can have the same number of digits after decimal point. So for instance now, my 0 0.717, let me repeat once more, 717. So I have six numbers after the decimal point, six digits after the decimal point. So if I must have the same thing in my quantity B, then I must repeat the 71 two more times to have six digits after the decimal point as well. So here we have 0 0.717, 717. Here we have 0 0.717, 171. So now that they have the same number of digits after decimal point, then I'm free to compare them. So just compare the digits after the point. Like I can say, I can say this is a 717,717, while this one is 717,171. So now, which one is bigger out of those two numbers? Of course, our A is bigger. So quantity A is greater here. All right. So if you ex if you express the two numbers, the two decimal numbers in fraction, and they don't have the same numerators, then you can simply write them such a way that they will have the same the same number of digits after decimal point. That's another way you can compare them. All right. So let's look at example two. Now example two says k is a digit in the decimal 1.3k5, and 1.3k5 is less than 1.33. Quantity a k, quantity b one. Okay, k is a digit in the decimal 1.3k5, and 1.3k5 is less than 1.33. So a k b1 all right so you can pause the video and try to solve the discussion by yourself and see which one is right like what the answer will be all right now let's look at the solution to this okay so now here 1.3k5 is less than 1.33 so a k and b1 now what do we need to do here well all we need to try to do like we did in the first example is to write these two decimal numbers in the with the same number of digits after decimal point okay so if i have 1.3k5 that's three numbers after decimal point and i will write this as 1.330 so i can have three numbers after decimal point as well now simply i can write this as something like 3k5 is less than 330 so what do you think my k should be such that this number will be less than 330 i don't forget my k is a digit is a number here so it must be a non-zero a non-negative number a non-negative number so that means my k could be zero so that i will have 305 of course which is less than 330 so this is possible my k could be one so that we have 315, which is less than 330. Very possible. My k could be 2, which is 325, which is also less than 330. Very possible. So it means my k could be 0. And if it is 0, that means my quantity B is greater. So that's telling me B. What if my k is 1? That means the two quantities are now equal telling me C. What if it is now 2? It means my quantity A is now greater. That is telling me A. So, 
which one do I choose here? Inconsistent answer. That simply means our answer will be D. So this cannot be determined. This cannot be determined. Okay. So that is how we can answer that question. Okay. Let's see the third example. Now the question says that D is the decimal form of the fraction 4 over 11. D is the decimal form of the fraction 4 over 11. Now quantity A, the 25th digit to the right of the decimal point in D. And then quantity B, 4. Alright? The 25th digit to the right of the decimal point in D. And quantity B, 4. Now you'll be thinking like, okay, how can I write this decimal till I get to the 25th digit? That is too long. The question is too hard. Uh, they are wicked. No. Just try to divide the fraction first. See the kind of decimal you will arrive at okay so first thing is to turn this 4 over 11 to decimal you can jump to your calculator just press 4 over 11 4 divided by 11 and see what the result will be in decimal form okay so now uh, 4 divided by 11 will give us something like this 11 in 4 is not possible so i will write 0 then i will put points and then add 0 to this to give me 40. Now 11 in 40 is 3. So 3 times 11 is 33. And if you subtract 33 from 40, you have 7. Okay. So 7. And then 11 in 70. That gives us 6. Okay. So that is 11 times 6. So give us 66. So, trust from 70, you have 4. Then you add 0, giving you 40. 11 in 40, you have 3. Okay, 3 times 11 is 33. So, that's 3 from 40, you have 7. Add 0. 11 in 70, you have 6. 6 times 11 is 66. So, trust from 70, you have 4. Add 0. So, you see that automatically, this will keep giving you 3, 6, 3, 6, 3, 6, and so on. So that means you are going to have a repeating decimal, 0 0.36. Okay, so the question is asking us now, if you keep writing this decimal like this, till we get to digit number 25, what will be number 25th digit? That's what quantity A is saying. All right, so don't forget quantity A. Quantity A says the 25th digit to the right, to the right of the decimal point, or the decimal point. Why quantity B says 4. Okay, so now, how do we get the 25th digit to the right of the decimal point? Or do you have to keep writing till you get to digit number 25? Well, you may do that since it is not much. But what if they're asking you uh, the 150 digits to the right? Will you keep writing that way? No. We just have to bring a little reasoning here and see. We can see that we have just 3 and 6. So definitely it's going to be one of these numbers. Either it's going to be 3 or it's going to be 6. But which one will it be? Now, let me just give you a clue here. One thing we can simply do here is this. Okay. If you learn something in our sequence class, where we have what we call repeating sequence like this, I said, if you want to find the 25th digit, for example, take that 25 and divide it by the number of digits repeating, which is just two numbers, 3 and 6. Now divide by 2. And that gives me 24 remainder 1. So if it is remainder 1, it means the first of the repeating digits. But if it is remainder 0, because you are divided by 2, our remainder must be 0 or 1. So if it is remainder 1, the first of the repeating digits, which will be 3. If it is remainder 0, then the second of the repeating digits is the last. Alright? So that's what we can do to get that uh, the 25th digit. So since our remainder is 1, that will be the first of the repeating digits, which is going to be 3. That means this is 3. Okay, and this quantity B says 4. That means our quantity B will be greater. So our answer will be B. Okay, another way we can know 
our 25th digit if you don't want to divide by 2 or doing something like this if you write them you have 0 0.36 36 36 36 and so on like that now when you have two digits repeating like this you can just use this idea look at it 3 is the first 6 is the second 3 is the third 6 is the fourth and so on okay and what's that telling us it simply means 3 is appearing at odd number positions 1 and 3 why 6 is appearing at the even number positions 2 and 4 okay so it simply means if I look at 25 it's an odd number then that means 3 must be at the 25th digit okay because 25 is an odd number so 3 is appearing at the odd number positions so 3 must be at the 25th digit so another way you can just know which will be at the 25th or which will be at any other number so if you don't want to do division maybe they're asking you like 1 and 25th number and you don't want to divide 1 and 5 by 2 you can just do that idea see the one that is appearing at the odd position and the one that is appearing at the even number position and that's all okay that's if you're having two numbers repeating anyways if you have more than two then you have to do division like this okay so that means here our quantity b will be greater b will be the right answer here okay so that is the solution to the third example and that brings us to the end of today's class and uh, i would advise like i've always said go through the video again and then practice the questions by yourself and also look for more questions to practice so the more you practice the better you become in gre and of course the higher your score when you take the exam okay so that's all we have the class for today and i will see you again in the next class all right so see you bye